All right, all right, all right. We heard you guys. This is a review of the JBL Sound Gear Sense. Let's see what the hype is all about, shall we? Namaste with DHRME, doing hella reliable, magnificent expression. Expression. Reliable. All right, let's kick things off with the design and build quality. What kind of buds are these? These are your typical air conduction earbuds that have a hook style. There you go, that's how it looks. And the biggest advantage of these kinds of buds is that you're aware of your surroundings since your ears are actually not blocked by anything. And the way it works is with a tiny speaker pointed towards your ear. That's this one right here. And what we like about what JBL has done here is emboss the letter R and L on that speaker so it's very easy to know which ear it's supposed to go on. We'll talk about the design of the earbud when we get to the comfort and fit. But for now, how do you control these buds? You get touch controls. No buttons here, just touch. And we've gotta say they're very responsive. The touch gets registered immediately and it starts playing music and it's starting to play music. It's very responsive in our opinion and you get pretty much all the controls that you need. You get track control, you get volume, you get voice assistant. And these are all adjustable in the app. In the app, you can scroll down to gestures and you can see all the controls that you get. But what's interesting about JBL's implementation is that you get gesture, let's say presets. So you get volume control and you can change that to playback control. So you can't actually change individual taps. What you can do is select a different profile. So the playback control profile looks as follows. You get your play pause track control and triggering Siri. And if you select volume control, you get volume up, volume down and Siri. So the way it's configured by default and what works for us as well is that the left is on volume control and the right bud is on playback control. So those are the controls for audio and you probably saw that there are phone call controls as well. We'll get to that when we talk about phone calls. So which colors do you get these in? Well, let's have a look. Unfortunately, the only colors you get these buds in is black, the one we have here, and white. That is it. So these aren't exactly spectacular in the colors department. But what they are spectacular in is how rugged these buds actually are. They're IP54 rated, meaning you've got solid dust and water resistance. So no issues with workouts or just in general outdoor use. It's not exactly just the colors where these don't look fantastic. On the ear, they're not exactly winning any design awards either. They're quite bulky on the ears, as you can see because of this unit right here. And although the overall build is solid, there's no, let's say, structural integrity issues. The materials are just hard plastic, so it's not exactly very premium feeling or looking. And what about that charging case? Looking at the case itself, you can see that it's not tiny, but it's not the biggest either. Comparing it to the Shox Open Fit, we can see that the Shox is smaller and more pocketable. But if you compare it to, for example, the Biodynamic Vario 200 Sport here, it is definitely smaller. So kind of middle of the road when it comes to open ear buds. What we particularly like about what JBL has done is adding a colorblind friendly battery indicator. So you see that little light strip over there? So that actually goes up and down depending on battery level. So that's a nice addition, JBL. Well done. But continuing on the battery front, let's take a look at what the numbers say. JBL advertises six hours on these buds and we put that to the test and got seven hours, 40 minutes. So we like JBL's under promise over deliver. And JBL also says that you get 18 hours of extra charge from the charging case. But what good is all of that if they're not comfortable to wear for long periods of time? But are they comfortable? Before we get into that, let's take a look at how the buds look like because they have a dual axis adjustment system. So as you can see, the bud can be adjusted in two ways. It can move this way to give space for your ear and it has a three clicks to be able to lock it into your ear. And we'll see that in a bit in the side angle. So as you can see, the unit can move up and down. And if we look at how that looks, I would open up the hook to fit onto my ear. It's fitted. And now if I wanna really secure this in place, I can click this down. And now this thing is not going anywhere. But are they comfortable? For a short amount of time, I had no issues wearing this, but we did start to feel a little bit with extended use. You do feel that they're around your ears and you start to feel a little bit of pinching around what we call the helical crust, which is this bit right here. Another challenge with these buds in particular, because they have a thick ear hook, is when you wear glasses. So I have a pair of thick glasses right here, these thick boys. And as you can see, when I put them on, they are resting on top of that ear hook. 
and you can't really get it past that ear hook because it's so thick. There are obviously open ear buds that have thinner ear hooks that will be more pleasant with the glasses, or you also have clip style buds, which we've made a video about recently, so go check that out. Well, if you're a fan of the neckband style open earbuds, then you'll be happy that JBL has actually included one in the box. Again, it's a pretty cheap plastic, but I guess it gets the job done. The way it works is you take the earbud and you put the hook into this hole. We are still talking about earbuds, guys. And you shove that in and you take the other earbud, you do the same thing, and then it'll look as follows once you put them on. There you go. So yeah, if you're into that kind of style, you have that option as well, which is nice. And suppose you would use these earbuds for phone calls. How would they sound? Well, have a look at my popsicles, icicles, and test. Here's a mic test on the JBL Sound Gear Sense with cars in the background. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. All right, this is a windy test with the JBL sound gear sense in windy conditions. See the wind speed on this one. Ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. So I just had a quick listen back to those samples and I've got to say they did pretty decently in noisy conditions. You heard the cars a little bit, but the voice was clear, although a bit processed, and it was fine as long as I didn't speak softly. And what's interesting is you mostly heard the wind even though it wasn't even that strong. So when we moved to the windy conditions, you saw, or you heard rather, how it sounded. And yeah, so don't take it outdoors if it's windy or even a little bit. But if it's a noisy area like a cafe or an office, office space, it should be okay. So yeah, mixed bag here, guys, for mics. All right, so for the Fuckman out there, you get a very interesting set of controls. Like we said before, you do get volume control in these buds, but they only work for audio, so they will not work while you're on a call. What will work when you're on a phone call is being able to answer hang up and mute the microphone. And mute is something that we generally don't see, but we do see volume, but strangely enough, JBL has dropped volume and added mute here. Interesting choice. Now, what about some of the extra features you get, or don't get, because you get no wireless charging here. That's something we rarely see on open earbuds, so that is definitely a gap to fill. And there's also no wear sensor, meaning that if you were to take the bud off, it will not pause your audio automatically or resume it when you put it back on. So that's a miss. However, JBL has included multipoint, so the JBL Sound Gear Sense can actually stay connected to two devices at the same time. And that worked well in our opinion. The app has no device list though, so you can actually see the list of devices that the buds are connected to and be able to you know, disconnect and connect. But you can pull connect. And what this means is that suppose you have the buds paired to more than two devices, but at that moment, they're only connected to two of them. You could go to that third device, for example, select the JBL from the Bluetooth list and bam, pulls the connection and you're connected to that device. So no need to put it into pairing mode, etc. And if we just hop back into the app, we can see what other kinds of extras you get. So you get an equalizer and we'll get to that in the sound bit, but the equalizer has presets as well as a custom EQ. You get smart audio and video, audio mode for normal audio and video mode if you want low latency, for example, also if you're gaming. You get a left, right sound balance if you want to change that. You can change voice prompts, the language, as well as turn them off entirely if you don't want them. You also get a max volume limiter. We love this feature and we always keep this on. And you have Find My Buds, which isn't GPS based, but it'll just beep so you know where to find them. You have an auto power off timer if you want that and you can update the firmware. So those are some of the extra features you don't get and you do get. Now, how does it sound? It's got this punchy mid bass, which I really like. And how I would characterize the sound is like a darker sound with the EQ off. Now the drums and bass sound great. And I used my Giorgio by Morador by Daft Punk test song because I really like how the bass and drum sound in that. I'm super familiar with it. 
So it is not as open and bright as some other earbuds like the One More or the uh, Biodynamic Vario 200, but it sounds great on iPhone as well as Android, which will be a consideration for many of you. Now the treble again did sound a bit cheap and low res, but other than that, I have nothing to complain about. Along with the customization in the app, the good EQ presets, the 10 band EQ and the adjustability to get the fit closer to your ear canal and get a more consistent sound every time, these are very, very good sounding open earbuds. All right, to buy or not to buy? Well, let's start off with the price. At $150, you're getting a lot of sense for your gear. A solid IP54 rating, great battery life, adjustable ear hooks, complete set of touch controls, multi-point, and great sound on both iPhone and Android. The biggest downsides though are the limited color options, the comfort and challenge when wearing thicker glasses, no wireless charging or a wear sensor, and the general cheap feeling and bulky design. But if you don't feel like they make sense, then take a look at this video sponsor, Shox. At a similar price point as the JBL, the Shox have two open ear style buds. They have the Open Fit and the Open Fit Air. What we particularly like about Shox open ears is that they come with a particularly thin ear hook, meaning it's extremely easy to wear with sunglasses. And when it comes to comfort in general, these are definitely our pick. But what is also our pick are you guys, our lovely patrons and YouTube members. Thanks a bunch for your support. And a special thanks goes to our Fuckman tier members, Gamma Panda and Paula. Thank you very, very, very much. And just a quick disclaimer, guys, we bought the JBL with our own money. And we're able to do this thanks to you guys. So thanks once again. Did we say thanks? You've been making sense of your sound gear and we've been DHRME. Do we?